recording here. Okay, we're recording. Great. Call to order the Beverages Licensing Authority hearing for Wednesday, October 18th, 2023 at 3 p.m. Thank you so much. I will begin with instructions for virtual hearing and rules of decorum. I'm just going to share my screen really quick. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversation. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board and commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found on our website. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up to speak using the name they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online for public comment. Um, and then the chat function, or in this case, the Q&A function should only be useful for technical questions to staff, and it should be not, and should not be used for public comments. Um, and then I'll just let everyone know if you haven't been to a BLA hearing since we've moved formats, you're in a webinar format, meaning um, you will not be promoted to panelists and able to unmute your microphone until um, you, uh, your item is called. So if you're here for public comment or if you're here for something on the agenda, um, I'll ask you to raise your hand at that time when that agenda item is called, and you'll be able to unmute at that time. So it's just an FYI for everyone. Um, you also won't be able to in turn on your video just to answer a question that I see in the Q&A. So no videos, no microphones until your agenda item is called. All right. Uh, next, I will call roll. You'll just speak your present aloud. Member Mike Absalom. Member Absalom, present. Uh, Chair Califano. Chair Califano, present. And Member Leah Roberts. Member Roberts, present. Thank you. And Member Carr is at six. Next, we have approval of beverage licensing authority minutes from September 20th, 2023. Do any of the board members have any edits to these minutes? Member Califano does not. Member Absalom does not, and Member Absalom also moved to approve the minutes. Great. Is there a second? I will second that. Great. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Minutes approved as is. Thank you so much. Um, next, we have hearing agenda issues from licensing clerk. There's no agenda issues that I'm aware of at this time. Um, I will move on to matters from Boulder Police Department, and it looks like Officer Jenning is present. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, just to bring you up to speed on some uh, things, we... Uh, as you know, I last meeting I mentioned we've been working on uh, hill closing times for establishments located in the Uja district. And um, I think we've um, finally figured out um, all of the um, appropriate closing times per their zoning uh, agreements. And um, we had one establishment that have, was extending beyond that, and that's been dealt with. Um, so I think going forward, at least we know exactly what the, the time should be and our uh, patrol hill team is going to be keeping an eye on those. Um, recently had a meeting with the owner of Taco Junkie located on the hill um, regarding some uh, concerns um, coming from our uh, patrol uh, neighborhood impact team. Um, and so I think it was a productive meeting, um, and I hope that 
Uh, things can improve there. And uh, a lot of suggestions were made as far as how they set up for their uh, large door crowds and um, fake IDs and, and things like that. So I, going forward, I'm, we're hopeful that that's uh, going to uh, be a lot better situation. Um, some limited compliance checks were done on the 13th. Um, my partner in the marijuana side took an operative out. And um, as you know, we're compliance checks are a com combination now of, of marijuana, tobacco, and alcohol. So with the limited operatives we have to work with, we're trying to balance that out with all three. So uh, for alcohol, five uh, establishments were checked. I'm happy to say they all passed. Uh, three of those were located on the hill, and the other two were liquor stores that are close proximity to uh, student housing, and those both paths as well. Um, that's all I have. I would like to let the BLA know um, I will be retiring on November uh, 2nd is my last uh, day. Um, 35 and a half plus years uh, with the police department is coming to a close. Uh, so uh, it's been my pleasure to uh, be able to work with uh, the BLA and and certainly Kristen and uh, her entire crew have been fantastic. Um, and uh, we haven't selected a my replacement yet, so I don't know who that's going to be. I should have some ability hopefully to train that person uh, before I leave. Um, so I will, uh, Kristen will be hopefully able to introduce them or they can introduce themselves at the next uh, November meeting. Um, and uh, things will go on. So any questions for me or anything you need? there any questions from the board for officer Denny? congratulations on your retirement though thank you i have no other questions again congratulations the same sentiment and thank you so much um it's been such a pleasure to have such an intensive officer working with us in compliance so thank you and well deserved yeah i i, I appreciate it and i i have to say i i think the the bla has always had uh since i've been doing this uh 2019 uh the members on the bla have always been top notch and um, um, went through some rough times losing one, as you know, but um, we, uh, my hat's off to you guys for uh, volunteering your time. Um, it's hard to do and uh, you do a great job. Well, thank you again, Officer Danik. Doesn't look like we have any questions for you, but yep, congratulations and uh, thanks for your service. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have agenda item three, matters from the Responsible Association of Retailers, and I see that Mr. Dewey is here. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I don't have a ton to report this time around. Um, the The numbers are still going up, which is great, meaning um, membership interest and enrollment is continuing to increase, um, as well as the tips trainings are going really well. I actually did like three in the past month in Boulder, the normal one. And then I did two uh, in-house ones uh, by special request, um, which does bring me to a question I would like to ask um, the BLA and or the licensing clerks. Um, I had one of the members I was at conducting the tips training at, uh, one of their staff members had mentioned, and it was on Pearl Street, how they had seen people drinking drinks to go or requesting drinks to go. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember where we're at right now. I would assume that's probably not something we would promote, but, um, they were concerned about it. And they said recently they've been seeing a lot more people drinking on Pearl street. So I just wanted to kind of be able to send out an announcement to the Boulder members, what's going on with that. So they can feel a little bit more confident about what they're doing in their businesses and or not doing um and other than that no things are just looking great to wrap up 2023 that's all i can say um still trying to get some key components for that patron safety training in november 
which is that training I like to have before the holiday season, just to remind people to um, keep it safe and responsible. Um, and unless I'm forgetting something else, I, I don't believe there's anything else for me to, to report today. Oh, and I would just say, like to say, Officer Dunig, congratulations on your retirement. And it also has been uh, a real pleasure working with you. Uh, don't tell the other officers with my other communities, but uh, you've definitely um, educated me a lot and been very helpful. So I appreciate that. Just wanted to say that to him. I, I appreciate that, Nathan. You've been great. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Dewey. Are there any questions for Nathan here? I mean, I guess my first thing to say is I would kind of probably defer the question about to go alcoholics. I believe um, it is still being discussed um, in the state legislature, but certainly you're not allowed to drink in public. The to go well, alcohol component is meant for you to take something home. I I would I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure exactly where the law is standing. I know during what happened during COVID is being extended. I'm not sure that it's fully passed yet. I haven't followed that as closely. I don't know if you know Matthew. Yeah, I was under the impression that that had passed a while ago, but um, it's permanent. But you are correct. Public consumption is not um, legal. Right. Yeah. So I think it's just without the borders. I'll just remind the members to keep it within their regulated licensed areas, as you guys have deemed. And um, if they do see that, um, just keep reporting it to me so that I can report it to kind of law enforcement so they can kind of keep an eye on 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 the streets for us because i agree that's not something we want happening uh but but we all know in a college community tends to from time to time but nathan i think um what i'd like you to remind um your membership is that the to-go alcohol component is legal but to remind them when they do send them with something that is not legal to go ahead and drink that in any sort of public place and i think that's something that should be very expressly considered when they give someone alcohol to go yeah, yeah, I think a reminder every once in a while is okay. So I'll be sending that out this month. I believe it's supposed to be sealed. There's stipulations that come yeah, with it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think you're right. I'll look that up in the log, and I just wanted to make sure how you guys felt about just even the to-go alcohol in general in, in the community. So I just wanted to double-check. All right, well, if there are no further questions for Mr. Dewey... I think we can move to the next agenda item. And thank you, Mr. Dewey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have agenda item four, which is general public comment for future beverage licensing authority hearings. If you are here to make public comment on an item that is not on the agenda for today, go ahead and raise your hand and I will allow you to speak. I do see one hand raised. Oh, they just took down. Okay. Last call, if you're here to speak on an agenda item that is not on the um, current agenda, go ahead and reach your hand. I have one hand raised. Give me one second. Okay, you should be able to unmute. Give me just one second so I can pull up a time. Okay, uh, you have three minutes to speak, so go ahead. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, and I apologize if this is not the right time to bring this up. I'm just here on behalf of Rafa LLC on Pearl Street to ask for continuance on um, our portion you'll, of this here, our, our official. You'll want to bring that up when I call the agenda. Okay, great, thanks. And last call, if you are here to give public comment on something that is not on the agenda, go ahead and raise your hand. Not seeing any hands raised. So I will move on to agenda item five, um, which is show cause hearing concerning an alleged violation and whether the hotel restaurant type liquor license held by Panko Corporation, CBA Chicken on the Hill, 
111913th Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302 should be suspended or revoked. If you are here to um, give testimony for this item, please go ahead and raise your hand so I can get you speak. Okay. Let's see, one hand raised. All right. Good afternoon. Are you the only one that will be speaking today? Hey there, yes. And uh, Christian, I see your hands raised. Go ahead. Thanks, Caitlin. I just want to remind everybody really quick that for show cause hearings, uh, the order here should really be um, uh, staff uh, information to the BLA about how we got here and um, that sort of background information. And then we should hear from uh, the licensee um, about you know, whatever information they want to present uh, related to this matter. So um, feel free to ask any procedural questions that you have, um, but just that's kind of the general order of things as we start off. Thank you. Should I um, swear the licensee in first? Okay. All right, if you will raise your right hand for me. And if you'll state your name and spell your name, Duong Lu, D U O N G Lu, L U. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are true and correct? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And Mr. Lu, since you're not represented by counsel today, I'm going to go ahead and read the proceedings into the record. Yes, sir. This is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the license of. Panko Corporation doing business as Chicken on the Hill with a hotel restaurant type liquor license shall be suspended or revoked on the basis of the violations alleged in the order to show cause served upon the licensee and requiring the licensee's presence here today. And because this is a disciplinary proceeding, the authority shall not ask for or allow comment from members of the general public on the guilt of the licensee or the appropriate discipline to be imposed. The purpose of this hearing is to receive testimony presented by the city and by the licensee in order to enable this authority to make findings and to determine by a preponderance of evidence whether or not the licensee has violated the various laws as alleged. If in the course of the hearing testimony or other evidence establishes the guilt of the licensee of a violation of some other law, rule, or regulation that those stated in the notice, the licensee shall be afforded a reasonable continuance upon any offer that evidence and defense explanation and mitigation is not then available to the licensee, but can be obtained within the period of a continuance not to exceed, exceed 10 days. A, a record is being made of these proceedings. All testimony shall be given under oath. The rules of evidence and requirements of proof and procedure shall confirm to the extent practicable in, uh, to those in civil non-jury cases, but when necessary to ascertain facts affecting the substantial rights of the public or of the licensee. The authority uh, may receive and consider evidence not admissible under such rules if such conduct of their um, conduct of their affairs. The rules of privilege required by law shall be respected in this proceeding, and the chair may exclude incompetent and unduly repetitious evidence. The chair shall rule upon all questions of evidence and can and can proceed subject to being overruled on motion sustained by a majority vote of those members of the authority present. Should a licensee wish to request a fine in lieu of active suspension days, they should notify the authority of this after a penalty is determined, if any, but before suspension posting and is discussed. And the licensee should be prepared to supply an estimated per day suspension dollar amount for the authority's deliberations. Those who desire to be heard shall be identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their name or their last name and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Is there any conflict of interest or ex parte communication from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. All right, if we could proceed with um, some evidence from the city. Sure, I'll just give you a kind of a rundown of the timeline here. So on May 17th, um, 2023, the BLA Conditionally approve this license at a renewal hearing um, for renewal. 
um, the condition was that the um, licensee would become compliant with occupation tax and sales tax um, before they were able to be renewed. Um, on July 27th, 2023, sales tax notified city licensing that um, the licensee was not compliant. On August 1st, 2023, the applicant was contacted and notified that they were non-compliant. Um, on or around August 9th, 2023, the applicant contacted city licensing to state that they would become compliant um, by the end of that week. So within seven days of that phone call. Um, on, I'm sorry, within five days of that phone call. On August 14th, um, the applicant, or I'm sorry, sales tax stated that the applicant was still non-compliant. The applicant was notified. Um, on or around August 22nd is when the show cause was ordered. And then the applicant did become compliant with sales tax on September 13th. That was a lot of information. So let me know if you need anything. Great, thank you. Are there any questions for Caitlin from the board about that? All right, um, Mr. Liu, if you could give us a rundown of how, why, and what happened with this. Hey guys, good afternoon. Um, so I was just wanted to tell you guys um, a little rundown on my year of this year. So back in February, my six month old daughter was diagnosed with hip dysplasia. We had to undergo four surgeries throughout four months. Back then we didn't have insurance, so we had to pay everything out of pocket. Um, that led that led us to not being here as present as I much wanted to. So employee was here most of the time. They were stealing on the job. They were giving out free food on the job. Um, that being said, our sales was dropped dramatically in June. We were making only about $6,000 in gross sales. And my rent was a little over $10,000. That's excluding all the expenses. I had to sell my truck um, to make ends meet in the month of June. I do have a, um, a check here for the sales agreement that I sold my car and just paying it forward to the rent. And I thought I had enough to get the sales tax, but I was short a couple thousand dollars. Um, so I had to, you know, either I had to choose to be evicted or be compliant with the rent first. And it was such a, a mess for us at that time. Fast forward to about August, September, we were having more customer coming back and we were making money again. I pay the remainder balance for the sales tax and my rent. I'm dedicated to save up all the money we'll be making this busy season just in case if we had another slow month that I won't be hit from the left field like back in June. I'm here to ask the city council, VLA, to give me one more chance to grant us the approval of our liquor license so I can continue to drive to success. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the board members? Um, I have a couple, but I'll let people go first. Why don't you go ahead, Matthew? I don't have any right now. Agreed. Go ahead. So one thing I'm curious about is, you know, you are a business that is um, 90, if not 100% student driven. There are downtimes on this, um, you know, in this area that you're located in terms of student activity, particularly holidays, summer season, things like that. Um, I just want to make sure and encourage you that those are things to be very fully aware of in the down season, because I mean, this, if we grant this renewal, this would be, you know, the second time we've done it. So I just, I just want to further emphasize that. And um, can you also let me know what happened with that employee? I'm assuming termination, but one, yes. Um, so there was, I believe, four employees that was coming in. And now, um, yes, they were terminated on the spot. As soon as I saw it on the cameras, we were just literally losing money, just having people work, but we're just losing money and they were they terminated right away. Um, there's days I have to work morning shifts and night shifts and come back the next day and earlier just to prep just to make sure we have everything 
Um, so I'm very dedicated to drive next us to the next level. And I understand there is downtime in our area and there's no excuse to what had happened and I'm just here to be better and I'm here to to drive us to the next level. Thank you. And I believe you're aware of, I, I believe your establishment has the 11 o'clock closing time on the Hill. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am aware. Any other questions from the board? Um, yeah, I'll just follow up with Member, Cal Member Califano's question. Uh, Mr. Liu, so I, I know there's many extenuating circumstances. Do you have a plan in place in case you cannot be there as president, as you're saying you're going to be there? Do you have someone else in place that you do have, you can trust to be there in case you do have to deal with certain things? Yes, sir. So uh, my daughter, she's turning 15 months old now. She will not be breastfed anymore. So my wife would have more time. Um, we're already having responsibilities of her coming in to help me out, making sure we open, making sure we're making the revenue that we should be and paying our taxes on time. I don't have any other questions. All right. Is there anything else you wish to present, Mr. Liu? No, sir. I didn't. That's all I have. All right. At this time, we will close for deliberation. Is there any discussion? Um, I have some initial thoughts of granting this renewal with the stipulation of monthly check-ins for at least at least six months. Um, I'm in agreement around those thoughts. Um, oh, we have a hand up over here from Christian. If it's okay, Chair Califano. Um, Okay, um, just uh, a reminder that this is a show cause hearing to see if the license should be suspended or revoked. So the license has already been renewed technically, right? Um, so this hearing, the determination that you're making here is whether there was a violation of um, you know, the state liquor code, state liquor rules, or any term or condition of the license. Um, and if you do find that there's been a violation, um, you can, but do not have to uh, suspend or revoke the license. Uh, you can find that there are mitigating factors um, as well, but you do have the option at this point to impose additional conditions on the license um, instead of suspending or, or something like that. So um, if you guys have any questions about that, then please feel free to ask. Thank you for that. It's been a while since we've had a show cause. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Okay, so at this point, I personally, I do think there was a violation. They what there was a violation of our terms. I'm in agreement with that as well. What is the? I'm trying to find my penalty schedule right now. What is the I penalty? I don't have mine in front of me either. I, I'm even having trouble finding it online. I don't have my pamphlet in front of me. The penalty schedule for the failure to pay taxes is what. So um, it depends on whether it's a first violation and the level of the violation um, at a show cause hearing. Um, and I believe um, unless Caitlin tells or Kristen tells us otherwise, I think this is the first violation in the last 12 months that we have. Um, yeah, okay, great. Uh, so it would be a, a fine would be uh, about 20% of the gross with me. Sorry, let me bring up my specific um okay so a fine is a minimum of five hundred dollars and uh sorry just getting there um uh the the lower of or sorry <laughs> at least $500, but uh, equivalent to 20% of the licensee's estimated gross revenues from sales of alcohol beverages specifically for seven days. And so again, that, that's, that's an optional thing. Um, uh, you, you could choose to impose a fine. You could to choose to just impose conditions. You could choose to suspend the license, revoke the license. Those are your options. Okay, are there any recommendations from the board on which direction they feel strongly about? 
I don't know, Leah, if you have any thoughts, I was kind of leaning towards what um, Matthew was getting at with conditions. Um, I don't personally see imposing a fine here as doing any good in any way. Um, so uh, if you have anything else, Leah, I kind of was um, trending towards what Matthew was saying. I agree that I don't think imposing a fine is the way to go. And I was curious to see what member Califano wanted to say with conditions. So um, I think we agree that there is a violation here in the conditions um, that I would put forward rather than a fine would be a, um, a monthly check-in of sales tax uh, being paid for at least six months. And that would mean having them come before the board for the next six months, each hearing, just to um, let us know that they've paid in full. We can verify that with the city. Do you mean, oh, until it's paid in full. So I guess, do we know how much is owed? At this time, they are compliant. So. The monthly check-in would be to make sure that they're paying it monthly and not getting behind again. Continuing to stay on top. I gotcha. Yeah. We've imposed this with previous licensees that have um, not paid their taxes. And all they have to do is come before us. It's one of the first agenda items each month. And they just state that they paid in full. City verifies and we move on. I would maybe even add an addendum to that, Member Califano, in terms of, and this is something I know that um, we've done in the past as an authority. Um, any other violations that would come forth in that period would um, go immediately to the highest penalty. So as you considered, they're in a very high volume place with a very specific rule set around their hours of operation. Um, and I would, I don't know if we can do that. Maybe I'd get Christiana involved and if we could add something else to this, but I think it's important that there's something else added on top of any other violations on top of tax, uh, missing their taxes, because I think, just seeing this case in front of us, it just makes me feel like we need to have some good presence in that, that licensed establishment. So I'm, I'm not sure where we can go with that. Maybe Christiana can guide us. Uh, sure. So my initial thought there is, um, you know, for, for violations, like a, a second violation or something like that, it would be, um, you could do another show cause hearing, for example, um, to see if you would suspend or revoke and then determine, you know, what the appropriate uh, penalty, if any, uh, is at that point. Um, that would be one thing which you wouldn't have to um, add on to any conditions for that. Um, that would kind of be your main way to um, address additional violations. Um, and the other thing is, um, you know, you are allowed at uh, the time of renewal to set this for a uh, hearing um, and just uh, you're, you're allowed to consider things like tax compliance and, and, and things like their record at that point, too. So um, I, I don't know if that really gets to what you want to do here, but I think those are the kind of main ways that you would have to address it, to address future violations. Definitely think there's... Um three things here, one of which I think it, we could, I don't think it needs to necessarily be a stipulation, but a, um, you know, just something if it happens, if they get another violation, this, that coupled, even if that's a violation of sale to a minor or something like that, that coupled with these past two hearings we've had with them obviously would be considered an aggravating factor and would tip that scale of uh, suspension. That makes sense to me. I mean, I would make a, a motion to approve Mayor Califano's um, approval or recognition that there was a violation, but that um, the licensee will have to appear before the beverage license authority for the next six months to prove good standing with taxes. And I would add for a hearing upon renewal uh, or their next renewal. Then add that to my motion. Um, can I can I ask you all just one question? Uh, I know that sometimes the December meeting is either um, you know not held or changed around or something like that. If there's no December meeting, will you um, just let that month go, or um, how would you like to address that if that happens? Because I, I don't know what <laughs> uh, I don't know what the um, what December will look like yet. 
Well, being that the December meeting is in December, essentially, um, and that's one of their slower months, that would be a month of my concern. Um, I would not let that go. Um, if the hearing is not held, I would still like a full six calendar months. Great. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear for um, the licensee. So member Califano would approve, or uh, would second, excuse me, uh, Mr. Absalom's vote of them appearing before us with monthly check-ins for six calendar months, as well as a re uh, hearing for their next renewal. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. All right. Uh, Mr. Liu, I just want to impose that you know, we've given you two um, two hearings to approve your license. And uh, yeah, but we don't want to see you get here again. Yes, sir. I, um, I, I appreciate that. Everything, guys. Thank you for everything. And I will not let you guys down. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Just get right, please. Okay, um, next we have agenda item six, which is continued public hearing and consideration of an application filed on March 29th, 2023 from Rafa Racing, LLC, DBA, Rafa, 1815 Pearl Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Simon Matrimon, 100% owner, and Renee Herrera, Herrera, proposed registered manager, with a premise business mailing address for a renewal of a beer and wine type liquor license. If you are here to speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, one hand raise and rejoin this panelist. And then whenever you're connected, if you'll unmute and unmute the camera for me. I see there's a mic here for this if you'll unmute and turn on your camera for me. There we go. All right. Um, and are you the only one who will be appearing for this matter? I, I am. I'm here in um, stead of uh, Rene Herrera. Uh, he's traveling this week for business, so he's just asked me to ask for continuance. Okay, I'm still gonna spray you in and we're gonna we're gonna open the hearing and then we can get to that part. So um if you'll just state your name and spell your name for me. Uh Michael Brady, M I C H A E L B is in boy R A D Y. Awesome. And then if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are true and correct? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Okay, great. And then if you'll also state how you're affiliated with the license. I'm sorry, what was that last part? Uh, if you'll just state how you're affiliated with the license. Uh, I am an employee here. I um, manage our community. Uh, Thank you. Okay. And then I'll hand it over to you. Uh, Christiana, I have a quick question. Um, since they are going to ask for a continuance, should I still read the proceedings into the record? Um, since we've opened the hearing and everything, uh, I'm afraid that yes, we should read the procedures into the record. Great, thank you. All right, Mr. Brady, since you're not represented by counsel, I'm gonna go ahead and read those proceedings into the record. This is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of Rafa Racing LLC doing business as Rafa or renewal of a hotel uh, restaurant type of license shall be granted or denied. This hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of the State of Colorado and the rules of the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. Purpose of this hearing is to receive information 
data and testimony by interested parties in order to enable the authority to make findings and to reach the conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the license shall be or the license shall be renewed. Interested parties are the applicant, residents of the neighborhood affected by the license as previously determined by the authority, and the owners and managers of a business located within the neighborhood. This hearing shall be limited to question of whether or not there is good cause to renew the license as set forth in the notice of hearing dated October 18, 2023. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who wish to desire shall identify themselves by stating their names, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Are there any um, conflict of interest from any of the board members or ex parte communication? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. All right, and are there any interested parties here today that wish to speak to this agenda item? If you could raise your hand. I don't see any hands raised. Great. All right, uh, Mr. Brady, you may proceed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, here to ask for a continuance on this so that um, Brene can uh, attend in, in person or via live stream as it is. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion from the board on whether or not to grant a continuance? No, the only thing I would say is that based on last month's hearing that we should make sure that there's there's no alcohol service going on. I remember there was some sort of um, ambiguity around that. Um, I just want to make sure that um, we're all clear on that um, from the licensee standpoint. Uh, yes, there's no alcohol being served here. Great. Is there a motion from the board on whether to grant this continuance or not? I just have one question. Um, have you guys had any internal gatherings where you've had cocktails and food? Um, we've had an RSVP only event uh, where we served just, just beer. Uh, and our understanding was as long as we had an RSVP list um, and the, the establishment was closed, we weren't selling the alcohol, that that was that, that was permitted. That's uh, and I think we've only had one of those. I do not believe that should be happening. Ms. Gianna, are you able to give any guidance of that? Um, I, I would need to just double check really quick um, and uh, make sure that they would, because they're they're on private property and everything. So I, I would just need to, need to double check. Um, but if Kristen knows off the top of her head, which she might, then uh, she should go ahead and let us know. Thank you. Um, Kristen Changar is licensing manager. I'm not sure if this answers the question, but I just wanted to point out that um, since Rafa did file a renewal application, they are allowed to continue selling alcohol under their license until final agency decision. So uh, technically they are allowed to continue operating their liquor license since that renewal application is pending right now. Great, thank you. Um, is there a motion for to grant the continuance from the board? Member Absalom will make a motion to grant the continuance. Member Califano will second that. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Continuance granted. Uh, Mr. Brady, I would just make sure that um, your uh, coworker is aware that these are held on the third Wednesday of every month at 3 p.m. So to make himself readily available. Thank you. The next hearing will be November 15th. Thank you. Okay, great. Let me just get out of the room. Can, can I ask a quick question? Uh, Am 
am I permitted to to leave this the, the hearing at, at the moment? Are we through with the business of Rafa? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, next we have agenda item seven, um, public hearing and consideration of an application filed on August 14th, 2023 from Sancho's Mexican Restaurant 2 LLC, DBA Sancho's Mexican Restaurant, 6545 Gun Park Drive, Unit 280, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Jose Luis Garcia Rodriguez, 100% owner, and Erica Ariano, proposed registered manager with the premise based business mailing address for a renewal of a hotel restaurant type liquor license. If you're here to speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll promote you to panelist. Seeing Mr. Beinford raise his hand, if there's anyone else who would like to speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, and then Mr. Bamberg, you can unmute and turn your camera on. Should be able to know. My goodness. <laughs> yes, James Bamford appearing on behalf of the AE uh, licensee, uh, Sancho's Mexican Restaurant 2 LLC. Thank you. And who will be appearing with you today? I have an employee of Phoenix, Brian uh, Priester who's available should uh, the board want to inquire or uh, want some testimony. Okay, and then uh, Phoenix, I will go ahead and swear you in. If you'll turn your camera on and unmute for me. Perfect. Will you just um, say your name and spell your name for the record? Phoenix, Brian Wayne Priester. P-H-O-E-N-I-X, B-R-I-A-N, P-R-I-E-S-T-E-R. Thank you very much. And um, if you'll raise your hand, do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are true and correct? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Thank you very much. And I'll hand it over to the board. Great. And Mr. Beimford, since you're representing as counsel, I'd ask if you'd waive the reading of the procedures into the record. We would waive. And for the record, James Beimford, registration 13142, appearing on behalf of the applicant or okay. licensee. Great. Thank you. And is there any ex parte communication or conflict of interest from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. All right. And is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this agenda item? Not seeing any. All right, Mr. Beinford, you may proceed. Okay. I think more of uh, an explanation of what happened and where we are today. Um, this was a, a change of management and the previous uh, on-site manager was the previous owner. And then after he sold the business, stayed on as the manager, and up until this year, uh, handled all the renewals. Uh, when he was replaced as the manager, uh, there was no education, no explanation of the 45-day pre-filing and the uh, proof of uh, training that's required. And uh, the responsibility for this uh, renewal and future renewals fell on Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix then filed as soon as he could uh, attempted to file the renewal the day uh, outside of the 45 day grace period, but the day before it expired. However, he was unaware of the proof of training requirement. So the applicant was the application, the renewal application was not accepted. Uh, then there was some inquiry to try to get some bilingual education. And after uh, getting the first uh, couple people trained and TIP certified, then uh, the, um, the the tips training at the time was then filed and the uh, application fees were paid with the late fees to the state and the city and then uh, followed up with some additional training. And I, I believe that was between the 45-day the grace period, the late filing, which was assessed the fine, 
Uh, now the correction has been made of the proof of training with the uh, four employees that have completed TIPS training. And it's the intent of Sancho's only to let servers that are TIPS trained serve going forward. And uh, they they were told they couldn't serve when the renewal was not filed on July 19th. And uh, they've continued to not serve. Um, I, I believe they can legally serve after they paid the fees and initially filed, but they wanted to err on the side of caution and they have not served alcohol for now close to three months uh, waiting for the renewal to be approved. And that, that that's kind of what happened. It was just a mistake caused by a change of uh, responsibilities and lack of uh, uh, the previous manager to educate the, the people going forward on, on the procedures. And now with this experience, I'm quite confident that uh, they won't miss the 45 days or the proof of training going forward. And Phoenix is, that's, uh, is here. Um, and I would open him to any questions the board would have uh, at this time. And we'd ask for a renewal uh, based on the board's findings. Great, thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Priester from the board? I have a couple of questions. Mr. Priester, are you taking over as the manager of this licensed premise? No, it'd be Erica. So, so I'm just, so is there a change of ownership happening? I, I guess I'm just kind of confused about what's happening here. Oh, um, Sean sold the company to Jose Luis. And that's the first time I got involved with filing any of the paperwork two years ago. And then since then, Sean was still part of the manager for the liquor. And back in March, that's when we were trying to get everything situated to do a full changeover. And that oh, was and so that you, was completed. Right. So you're working on the administrative end, but Erica, I'm just seeing her training here. Um because <laughs> she's head cashier, so she's making sure with the tips training as well as uh the three other girls. All right, you can correct me if I'm wrong here in the packet that I'm looking at, but I'm I'm seeing that there are out of date tips training dates here. Make sure we just got those done. Oh, here I see the bottom ones now. What's the date on these? August ninth. Two oh, August, 9th. August 9th, 2023. Mm -hmm. And then two others. That, that was the, that was the training date, the current training date. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I have no other questions. Great. Uh, Mr. Beinford, do you have anything else to present? Uh no. Just a request that the license be renewed. This time we will close for deliberation. Is there a motion or discussion? Member Califano would make a motion to renew. Member Roberts will second the motion to renew. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. License renewed. Thank you so much. I think we're. <laughs> I think we'll be uh, leaving the the chat here. Thank Great. you, Caitlin. Thanks again. Yeah. Before you move on to the next agenda item, I'm not sure if this is the time to ask this or not, um, and maybe Christiana can uh, join in with this. But um, the next two agenda items, I believe, are under same ownership. So much like we did last month with those, can we? read those both into the record at once and then hear the different presentations for each. Yeah, um, I would just say check in with the applicant for those two licenses to make sure that they are okay with that um, before doing so, but as long as they're um, okay with doing it that way and we can consolidate a little bit of time uh, or save a little bit of time, then um, it's fine to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mr. Stephen is coming.
Uh, Mr. Stapen, I believe you may have heard that. I did hear that and we have no objection to combining both of them into one, thank you. Great, if we could just go ahead and get uh, both agenda items uh, opened and read into the record. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll do these at the same time. So we have agenda item eight, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on August 17th, 2023 from Dillon Companies LLC, DBA King Supers, division number 33. 3600 Table Mesa Drive, Boulder, Colorado, 80305, Kroger Company as 100% owner, and with Stephen J. Dreyer as president, Thomas J. Sullivan as vice president, Christine R. Wheatley as director slash vice president slash secretary, Karen L. Fike as VP and treasurer, Philip E. Nelson as vice president, and Tony Woodward as store manager, with a business mailing address of P.O. Box 305103. Nashville, Tennessee, 37230 for a permanent modification of a fermented malt beverage and wine retailer off-premise type liquor license. We also have agenda item number nine, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on August 17th, 2023 from Dillon Companies, LLC, DBA, King Supers, division number 61, 16 Silver Company as 100% owner and with Stephen J. Dreyer, J. Dreyer as president, Thomas J. Sullivan as vice president, Christine R. Wheatley as director slash vice president slash secretary, Karen L. Fike as vice president and treasurer, Philip E. Nelson as vice president and with Joe Terraz as store manager with a business mailing address of P.O. Box 305103, Nashville, Tennessee, 372304 for a permanent modification of a fermented milk beverage and one retailer off premise type liquor license. And Mr. Stephen, I will just ask who will be appearing for these matters, and I'll swear them in. Thank you so very much. The two individuals will be speaking on behalf of these two separate modifications. One is Teresa Dietz. She's on your screen. And we also have Eva Gerritsen on behalf of Liquor Pros, and she's also present on your screen. Perfect. Um, Ms. Dietz, I will ask you to state your name and spell your name for the record. Uh, my name is Teresa Dietz. Uh, last name is D-I-E-T-Z. Thank you. And Ms. Garrison, I'll have you do the same. Yeah. Hi, how's everyone doing? Um, for the record, my name is Eva Garrison, G-A-R-R-E-T-S-O-N, one of the owners of Liquor Licensing Professionals, and we're located at 5515 Saddle Rock Place in Colorado Springs. Thank you. And if you'll both raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are true and correct? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? I do. Thank you. Okay. Great. Mr. Stapen, I'm not sure if we got your, um, your appearance recorded into the record. Absolutely. Thank you. Adam Stapen, S-T-A-P-E-N, an attorney licensed to practice law here in the great state of Colorado, albeit I'm in California now. My registration number is 27506. I'm appearing on behalf of both licensees. Great, thank you. And since you're representing as counsel, I'd ask if you'd be willing to waive the reading of the procedures into the record. I would. Great. Is there any ex parte communication or conflict of interest from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. You actually, I would disclose that I shop at one of these. <laughs> So, um, uh, and is there anybody here in the audience that wishes to speak to this agenda item? I don't see any hands. Perfect. All right, Mr. Stapen, you may proceed. Thank you so very much for your time, folks. Obviously the first matter up is I believe the King Supers number 33. This one has a couple little hiccups to it. So I'd like to briefly talk to you about those. I believe these are two pretty straightforward modifications of premise where we're adding wine as a permanent location within the stores rather than having a lot of temporary locations. Obviously these stores will continue to have temporary locations scattered throughout, but we're looking for approval for permanent locations of wine. The first one is King Supers number 33 over at Table Mesa. And if you recall, uh, I think chairperson, you were there if I'm not mistaken. This is when 3-2 beer converted to full strength. And on March 20, 2019, I appeared before you after having a contested hearing with the liquor store, I believe 
within the same shopping center. We were looking to expand out the beer sets. Um, as part of a compromise, we offered to not expand out beer for seven years. Um, and what I did is I made sure that we received the recording and had it transcribed under oath for your consideration. Uh, two things. One, I'd like to congratulate Officer Denig for his retirement. And two, he even mentioned in his retirement speech, if you would, having someone be lost as well from the authority. And when I heard the recording and heard Kevin Mahoney was the one that moved to approve the uh, modification with it, with our own proposed condition. Uh, I have to say it's sad in my heart. I think that needs to be said. Um, but so I wanted that to be transcribed for you folks. So you understand that King Supers didn't agree not to modify for a period of seven years in total, but we specifically limited to the FMB beer. As you see on the floor plans, the after floor plans for King Supers number 33, all we're asking to do is add chilled wine in one location and ambient wine in another location. We're honoring the non-restriction, or should say the restriction, of not modifying the premises as it relates to beer. Liquor pros with Eva Garrison circulating the petitions, that was kind of a background of why we're here and why this one has a little wrinkle to it. But without further ado, if you don't mind, I'd like to call Ms. Garrison to speak as to the petitions and furtherance of this modification of premise. Please. Ms. Garrison, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, I can. Great, you were sworn in. I know these folks know you quite well. Again, can you briefly describe what you do for a living? Yes, sir. And uh, once again, I echo you and saying congratulations to Officer Denick. That is a huge accomplishment to go um, as long as he did and, you know, safe and everything like that. Um, so congratulations to him. Um, once again, for the record, my name is Eva Gerritsen. I'm one of the owners of Liquor Licensing Professionals doing businesses, Liquor Pros. And we are a professional uh, survey company doing needs and desire survey for both liquor and marijuana licenses throughout the entire state of Colorado. Were you, were you retained to circulate petitions in furtherance of this modification of premise? Yes, sir, we were. And can you describe to the authority how you circulate the petitions, when you circulated them, and ultimately what the results were? So as you echoed from before, um, doing the first one going back to 2019 uh, with the 3-2 beer license that, or the 3-2 the beer license, we did handle the first modification of that one going forward. Knowing how uh, sensitive the, the, this location is and how um, where, it, where it's located and what the results were last time given concerns, we did make it a point to try and contact all of the other retail liquor stores in and around the area that had beer and wine um, because we wanted to be as transparent as possible for the authority, making sure we let everybody know, uh, giving proper notification, even if we didn't give a uh, get a signature from these areas, still wanted to let them know what King Supers was trying to do in here. Um, and then we stayed in close doing samples in and around the area. Um, our surveyor carried both a business and residential packet with them. Uh, with that, we asked those business owners and managers to identify themselves as such. Uh, once again, everybody was familiar with King Supers. We were just letting them know what the modification was. Um, we also carried around with us the um, layout. Uh, one of the bigger concerns was with last time was the space that was taken up um, from the last time. So we really wanted to make sure that we carried out the layout with us so that folks uh, knew exactly how much space was being added or where the wine was going um, in that, which was provided to us in the packet as well. And can you describe to the authority what the results were after you conducted the circulation of those petitions? Yes, sir. So um, we did surveys on the dates of Thursday, September 28th and, and Friday, September 29th. Everybody was really willing to uh, come in and put um, give us a good participation. There is a lot of uh, students in the area, uh, new um, college students, all of that in there. So once again, our surveyors are trained to uh, recognize and ask for identification to make sure they are over 21, that they're not just signing um, just for the favor of the liquor, even though they can't do it because you do have to be over 21 or 21 and over. Um, 
of the 410 business owners, managers, and residents, we, we did obtain a total of 120 signatures. 24 were from business owners and managers. All 24 signed in favor at 100%. So we went ahead and we focused all our efforts back on the residential. Uh, we then obtained a total of 96 residential signatures, 64 signing in favor at 67%, and 32 signing in um, in opposition um, at 33%. Um, if we combine these totals, and these are just the raw numbers, we have 73% signing in favor and 27% opposed. Um, as I spoke on the last um, hearing with regards to Circle K, um, the average of these new licenses and the modification of licenses that we've seen in here kind of mirrored what the 3-2 was like when we went to full um, liquor or th full, full beer, um, fermented malt beverage, sorry, um, which is anywhere in the low set or high 70s to low 80s. This is a little bit less than that. Uh, once again, we do have those folks to write in. Um, Boulder petition packets do have an, a spot where you ask um, why they are in favor or opposed to this license. So we do try and get as much information as possible in order to provide to the authority. 19, um, if you go to page two, uh, the reasons for opposition signatures inside that table right there, 19 uh, declined to provide us a reason, one stated there was enough or too many, um, nine stated that they did want to support small and local businesses, uh, one was against alcohol, one said there was a lack of shoplifting stoppage, which means um, I guess they, they need more security, um, and the other one is remove the frozen and organic food. Uh, section, which I believe that was one of the issues from the last time. So um, looking at these, if we remove those items that may be considered invalid or irrelevant and speaking to the needs and desires, it does bump that up to 81, which is the average of what we've seen um, in favor and 19% opposed. But looking at the raw numbers of 73 as compared to the 27%, it still shows a positive need and desire for this uh, modification of um, the license. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. So I don't have any further questions. The authority may have some questions. Are there any questions for Ms. Garrettson from the board? I, I do have one. I noticed on your business petition that uh, Petty John's was not on there. Not, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, you know, I'll have to go back and look at the tally sheets to find out why. Um, and a lot of those, we're running into a lot of managers are just not old enough to sign. Um, so that's that's a part of the, the, the thing that we've been catching is a lot of the management are younger college students willing to go get a job. The problem is they're just not able to sign on these. So we do try and give as much notification as possible, but I can, I can see if we can go back and look at the tally sheets and, and relay that back to you folks if you like. Um, I, I don't think that's necessary, but thank you. Uh, Leah, I believe you had a question. I, my question was in the lines of how could you have 100%? I just don't think Petty Johns would be in favor of King Supers expanding. So it just feels incomplete. And I don't know. I don't, I don't like that they were left out of this. Okay. Well, and like I said, it's maybe not that we didn't go to that location. I just don't know why they didn't. If you look at the map, we did hit several areas um, that mark the business areas around there. And I think that's what we were trying to do is grab samples from in and around the area, especially with the businesses. But once again, the residential, we did try and stay in close because that's a that's a huge part of that, the feedback. So um, I think that's when we saw the 24% in there, I think that's when we shifted over to the residential because that was the area of most concern. Are there any other questions from the board? Not seeing any, Mr. Stapen, you may proceed. I just have one follow-up question for Ms. Garrettson. Ms. Garrettson, did you receive any instructions on behalf of the licensee to not knock on Petty John's door or to exclude other liquor stores from your petitioning? No, sir. Thank you. I don't know any further questions. Great. Please continue. Uh, Ms. Deeds, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. You were sworn in. Would you please tell these folks your current occupation and what you do for a living? 
I'm the uh, grocery direct store delivery and adult beverage specialist for King Supers and City Markets locations. Have you been charged with the obligation to add wine to all the city markets and King Supers within the state of Colorado? Yes. And can you describe to the authority what you're intending to do here should this modification of premises be granted? I know the after floor plan is pretty self-explanatory, but can you give these folks an understanding of where you're looking to add permanent locations of wine? What we did mostly in, in our stores was reduce the seasonal sections. Um, and it, I know, especially in store 33, that was one of those stores that we had done that with. Um, at store number, well, we'll talk 33. Um, that was the seasonal section that we've removed. Uh, we're only looking to place wine, um, you know, next to the beer section um, for it to be chilled. And that Those are our only changes that we have there at 33. There is some other remerch, but that has already taken place. So for purposes of alcohol approval, which is why we're before this board today, all you're looking at asking is approval to add the about eight feet of chilled wine display by the existing beer permit location and adding about 72 feet of ambient wine. We're making a record. What does ambient mean? Uh, room temperature. Thank you. We're not changing or altering any location of the permanent beer, are we not? Um, no, we are not. You're keeping that same location. And if this modification is granted, just so I don't have to ask you the same question at the next hearing that we're going to have immediately after this one, are any of your alcohol policies or procedures going to change, or are you still going to maintain the policies and procedures that you currently have in place? Currently the same policies and procedures that we have. Okay. I don't have any further questions of um, this witness if the authority has any questions. Are there any questions from the authority for Ms. Dietz? I have a question. Um, I'm looking at the the drawing and while well, it says 72 feet, but really that's an aisle, correct? Is that going to be both sides of the aisle? No, it'll just be the one side of the aisle. We have um, Italian foods and um, pastas on the other side of the aisle facing the wine. So you're integrating the wine into a food aisle, but will one whole side be wine? Yes. Great. I don't think there are any other questions. Uh, Mr. Stapen, please continue. Thank you. And I'd like to direct your attention to King Supers number 61 located over there on 30th Street. Uh, again, I'd like to recall Ms. Gerritsen to speak as to the needs and desires as a result of the petition that was circulated in furtherance of this application. Mr. Stapen, let's actually uh, keep with this first agenda item and we'll, if you have nothing else, we can close for deliberation. I have nothing else at this time. I apologize, Chairperson. All right, so we will close for deliberation. Is there any discussion or motion? The only thing I would like to say on the record um, is it's just, it is a little, I agree with Member Roberts, it is a little curious that um, Petty Johns was not on the petition. Um, the other issue I, I struggle with, and I could be wrong, but I struggle with believing that at a liquor store that their manager is not someone of age. But I would just like to put that on the record. Um, anything else, Ms. Member Roberts? I same same thought. I'm glad that you put it on the record. And just to put it on the record, there are other licensed premises in that business area, and none of which are on the none of those. I'm not seeing any of the businesses here that are actually licensed premises have been petitioned. Just looking at it again after you brought that up. Um, but I mean, I don't know what bearing that really has for us, but thank you for putting that on the record. All right. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the permit modification. Is there a second? Member Califano would second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. All right, permanent modification approved. Uh, Mr. Stapen, if you'd like to move on to the next um, store. Thank you. Sorry for jumping the gun there. The next location, obviously, is King Supers, number 61, located on 30th Street. I would like to recall Ms. Gerritsen as to the petition survey that was conducted in furtherance of this application. Ms. Gerritsen, can you still hear me okay? Yes, sir, I can. 
uh, and all the testimony that you provided regarding your background and what you folks do for a living, that stays the same for this application, is that correct? Yes, sir, it does. And do you guarantee results when you circulate these petitions? No, sir, we do not. And can you please describe the authority, how you circulate these petitions and what results were obtained? Sure. Um, this one was done, handled by one of our veteran surveyors, um, Carol, uh, who has done surveys in the state since 2008, before, way back then. So she conducted the needs and desires regarding um, the modification of a fermented malt beverage and wine off-premises liquor license. Um, she did this survey on Thursday, September 28th, Friday, September 29th, and some, Sunday, October 1st. Uh, made attempted contacts with 293 business owners, managers, and residents, and obtained a total of 111 signatures. Um, this one, once again, I, I wanna say that, yeah, they could, um, once we do the pre presentation of that, at there, we do say you can sign in favor or opposed to this license, and we would like feedback for the authority. So we use specific language when we uh, show up to a location as such. Um, we don't sway them in anything. We hand them the whole entire petition packet, so they're more than welcome to look through the entire thing. Um, if they do have any questions, we also, on the top of your petition packets, has the hearing information. We always let them know that they can take a photo of that if they want to and attend the hearing. Um, if they do not want to do that, we also let them know that there is a notification sign posted on the premises that has all the additional information as well, that they are more than welcome to the attend um, the hearing if they have any questions or concerns. Um, with this one, um, this one was clear once again, 59 uh, business owners, managers, and residents signed in favor at 100%. Um, we did try and stay in close to the area. It is quite a big area, but we did try and stay in close to this location. Uh, went out and grabbed 52 residential signatures. All of those signed in favor at 52%. She said this had no issues whatsoever with adding wine to this location. Folks were excited about it. They were looking forward to it. And the 100% clearly shows a need and desire for this license in the area. Thank you. I don't have any further questions from Ms. Garrison. I don't know if the authority has any questions. Are there any questions from the board? I don't think so. I would just like to say on this one, I see some other um, retail establishments for liquor. So um, that's pretty impressive, 100%. Not seeing any other questions, uh, Mr. Stapen. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Deeds, can you still hear me okay? Yes, I can. And can you please describe to the authority what we're asking to be approved today? My understanding is we're looking at adding two new locations for wine and then maybe a little change of, the, of a beer end cap. Can you describe the modifications that you're seeking here at this location? We're looking to add chilled wine to the end of the beer run um, and flipping, putting the pick six, so the single package that you make your own six pack, to the front of the aisle, replacing energy drinks and soft drinks. And then we're placing chilled wine at the back of that end cap. Then we would have ambient wine that's on the back side of produce facing bakery. And to follow up on the question that one of the members had, is this going to be on both sides of the gondola or just one side of the aisle? It's just, just one, it's just one side, yeah. Just one side of the aisle. Uh, and similarly, the same training policies and procedures that you have placed at this location are not going to change. Correct. Do you have anything else you'd like to advise the authority as to what we're trying to do at King Supers number 61 here on 30th Street? No, I think it's very straightforward what we've got on the plan and what we spoke about. Thank you very much. I don't have any further questions at this time. Are there any questions from any of the board members? Not seeing any. Um, all right. At this time, we will close for deliberation. Uh, is there a motion and discussion? Looks pretty straightforward. Member Abbott will make a motion to approve the permanent modification. Member Roberts will second that. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Permanent modification approved.
Thank you so very much. Wonderful. Thank you. you guys take care. All right. Thank you. Next, we have uh, agenda item 10, continued public hearing and consideration of an application filed on July 6th. 2023 from Boulder Broker in LLC, uh, DBA Broker Swim Club slash Bottom of the Rocks, 555 30th Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80303. Uh, Gemma Williams, 100% owner and member, and Eric Jacobson, proposed registered manager. The firm is business mailing address for a new hotel restaurant type liquor license. And if you're here to um, speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand. And I'll promote you to panelist. And then I will let the board know that I did send out two exhibits, uh, one yesterday and one this morning regarding uh, this item. Okay, and then Mr. Gamal. Hey, good Thank afternoon, you. everyone. Good seeing everyone again. And it looks like I have Gemma Williams and Greg Topel here. Is that all that we're expecting? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. I will have them unmute and turn on their cameras. Hey. Hello. Okay. Um, Gemma, also, if you've gotten, um, say your name, spell your name, and um, for the record, sorry. Yeah. Um, Gemma Williams, G E M M A W I L L I A M S. Hi, Mr. Tabella, how have you do the same thing? Uh, Greg Topel, G-R-E-G-T-O-P-E-L. Perfect, and I'll have you both raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are correct and true? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Yes. Thank you, I'll hand over to the board. Great, Mr. Gimmel, can we just get you to record your appearance here? Of course, uh, Austin Gimmel on behalf of Boulder Broker Inn, registration number 52753. Great, and since you're representing his counsel, I'd ask if you'd be willing to waive the reading of the procedures into the record? We would be willing, thank you. And is there any ex parte communication or conflicts of interest from any of the board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. And is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this agenda item? Not seeing any. And Mr. Gimmel, I, I do have a quick request. And Christiana, stop me if I am overstepping here at all. Um, but I, all I, we, they testified before us last month. I don't know how familiar you are with that um, hearing um, or what was said. But I would just ask that um, we kind of present this in um, things that have changed, ideas that we have addressed, because we have um, seen a lot of this testimony. So if, if it hasn't changed, I don't think we need to hear repetitious testimony, just um, specifically to the items that we addressed. Yeah, and I am familiar with the past testimony. And I think really this this time around is focusing on the questions that the board raised at the previous hearing in September. Perfect. Um, thank you for that. And you may proceed. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to start by saying on behalf of the applicant, we wanted to thank the board for its questions last month, as well as the Boulder Police Department and Ms. Teague, who I know is up in Snowmass right now from the city, for their time in walking through the premise uh, with Ms. Williams and Mr. Topel last week to discuss service operations. Uh, these questions and the meetings uh, really helped Boulder Broker in develop visual aids and other written materials to assist in explaining its service operations for the board, which we're going to go through today. Um, and to avoid repetitious testimony, I just really quickly wanted to have Gemma recap on what the concept of this hotel really is, just to lay a foundation before we get into the floor plan. Um, hi, board. Um, let's see. So our concept is uh, we are renovating a 118-room hotel that's been in operation since 1972. Uh, we took the property over three years ago and have been updating it since then, um, refurbishing the rooms, the existing swimming pool, and the common areas. Um, we're just hoping to reopen the restaurant that has been closed for the past decade. Great, thank you, Gemma. And so really, you're refurbishing this, this hidden gem and reopening it to the public, is that right? That's the goal, yes. 
Great. And with that being said, um, could you just kind of describe some of the amenities that the hotel would be offering in addition just to rooms? Yeah, um, a restaurant, coffee shop, a game room, and then the outdoor pool. Great. And so has that pool also been there uh, since it was a hotel previously? Yes, it's been there since it was built in 1972. Great. And what's the concept for the restaurant? Um, so we're hoping it to be a place for the community to gather. So residents out of town, alumni, students, um, and a property with a restaurant, a pool that focuses on Asian fusion food, craft cocktails, mocktails, and local beer. Great. So we're really looking at amenities that are akin to, say, a family country club. Yeah, that's our goal here. Great. And so now I'm going to move on. I want to talk a little bit more about the service measures that were raised last time. Um, Caitlin, I know you and I had talked. Uh, if you would, if you could, please just share your screen. I believe it's uh, ex exhibit number two, page seven. And this is the operations diagram that we had developed or that the applicant had developed with Mr. Topel that I just wanted to run through with the board. Yep, just one. Thank you. Page seven. Yeah, I believe it's page seven. It's got all the shiny dots on it. And while you're doing that, because um, I want to put Caitlin on the spot, Mr. Tapel, um, could you just briefly describe the type of information that is on this diagram to the board, just in general, before we start running running through it in specific? Certainly, uh, it's what we would call an operational diagram, kind of depicting uh, the various service zones, how they're broken out, um, the differentiation between um, the service styles and the offerings within each of these areas, and uh, the kind of the guest to employee ratios, those kinds of things. Perfect. And let's start with the main dining library area, which is the section just a little bit towards the top of our floor plan. So could you just describe, like, where are the primary points of ingress and egress for patrons and guests of the hotel for this specific so, area? Yeah, in that particular area, that, um, that, that the library slash main dining that we're calling is, um, is adjacent to the main hotel lobby. So uh, you can kind of see a vestibule kind of plan north of the, uh, of, of the white area. That uh, is where the connection point between the, um, the restaurant and the hotel, or that would be the main ingress egress for that area. Great. And Mr. Topel, could you just provide a, a general idea of hours of operation for this main dining and library? If it's the same as the game room, main bar and pool area, that's fine. And I just wanted to give an initial idea of what our hours of operation are going to be. This one actually has a small little uh, coffee service area. So it'll be the first of the areas to open. So it'll serve as kind of a, a, ca uh, a coffee gathering spot from 7 to 11 when the rest of the world opens. Gotcha. And so with that being said, you also at the top have an estimated peak uh, occupancy level for each area. So for this main dining area, can you describe, you know, what that number is and what it portrays for our operations diagram? Yeah, so um, what we're calling peak is, uh, we don't want to equate it with maximum, but peak is when we're expecting, um, you know, a full dining room that's going to require a full service staff uh, to be aware that this particular area is, is traditional restaurant style service, full fledged tables. So it has the highest density of uh, server to guest ratio, okay, uh, it's the highest touch of all services. Yeah. Great. And with that being said, I know this floor plan really only counts for front of front of house staff, which is obviously the most important for alcohol service. But for the main dining area, can you just give us an idea of the staffing capacity when we're operating at higher levels? Um, if you just if for just the front of the house, we're anticipating three servers, one busser, um, one host or door and one bartender slash barista. The uh, the the plan is to have a, um, an interior and exterior manager when applicable. So we we call it for the sake of this um, diagram, a 0.5 manager, but there's a manager on the floor as well. Perfect. And this main dining area, it does not have a bar, right? It's just got the the kind of espresso or coffee. Yeah, it's, it's got the coffee bar, but um, it does not serve alcohol, if that's what we mean by definition of bar. Got you. So the alcohol would be picked up by a server from the main bar area and carried in to guests there. Is that correct? That is correct. 
Okay. And so for your uh, front of house staff that are serving alcohol, have the training procedures that you described at the last hearing, have those changed at all? Or are you going to continue to implement what we've been talking about since September 20th? Uh, uh, the, the same training procedures as well. The only differentiation between this and possibly what would be considered an, um, a, um, a, uh, a traditional restaurant is that all of these people, in addition to TIP certification, internal certifications, is that they're also, also going to be CPR trained as well. Okay. And also, will you um, implement like orientation periods for training just to ensure that uh, TIPS training is clicking with your front of the house staff who are handling alcohol? Yep. Um, as a requisite, anybody serving alcohol will need to be TIP certified. If they are not by the, at the higher point, then we will get them um, TIP certified ourselves within 60 days of hire. Um, and, um, and yes, the, we do an extensive training program for all things. Again, we would really like to believe ourselves to be incredible hospitality specialists. Our training is very extensive, including and especially around um, alcohol service and safety. Great. And now talking a little bit about the flow of patrons through these areas, you know, the pool, the main bar, the main dining. If, for instance, you have a patron that comes into the main dining area, tries to order a drink, has already explained that they were already carted out at the pool deck, they don't need to be carted again. What is your server going to do in that situation? Or what is Boulder Brokers and server going to do in that situation? What is the training? Yeah, um, we will be as courteous as we can, and we're always going to accommodate our every guest, but um, always anytime there, a, a guest orders an alcoholic beverage, they're going to be um, carded in ID. Do you need to have one ID with your face? It's, it's going to happen every single time, again, with the most courteous way possible, but unbelievably strict on those fronts. Great. And another hypothetical for you, you Mr. Tapel. If, for instance, a patron comes into the main dining area, sits down and says, hey, I got four friends out at the pool. Can I have five beers so I can bring those out to them? What is your staff going to do in that situation? How are they trained to handle that? Uh, once again, it's it's one ID with that person's face on it that would uh, allow them to get a beer. But we'll let them know at that time that we're so happy to get them a beer and that we'll send somebody right out to get the IDs and service their friends so that we won't inconvenience them. But we do have a, a really good guest to staff ratio or staff to guest ratio. So we're going to get somebody out there. No time at all. OK, great. And now uh, on the converse, so say some a patron or guest is finishing dinner in the main dining area or finishing a meal in the main dining area and has not done with their alcoholic beverage, but wishes to take it to another area such as the main bar or pool area, not outside the premises. What, what is the policy there for the hotel? Um, if they wanted to move from one location to the next, they, they're welcome to do so. Um, if they were moving from inside out to the pool decks, it's going to have to be put into a very distinctive uh, branded uh, plastic cup. We have no glassware of any kind is going to ever hit the pool decks. Right. And so are, would you allow a guest to take a drink back to their room um, if they were staying at the hotel? Um, if that's a, a confirmed scenario, then yes, they could take a drink back to their room. But at that time, we would let them know that no no drinks can come back into the facility, regardless of if they purchased a tier originally. So yes, they can go to the room, but no, they can't bring anything back in. Okay. So for your main dining area, main bar, and pool area, if a guest wishes to leave with alcohol, you're going to have staff members trained to inform them they can no longer bring any alcohol back in. Yeah, we feel it's going to be a courtesy so that they just don't think it's, um, it, we did, just don't want any confusion that would result in customer dissatisfaction. Okay. And so what is the hotel's policy for guests trying to walk out the front door of the premises with one of these plastic cups of alcohol? How are you yeah. going to handle that situation? Nobody can leave our premises with with alcohol. That's that 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 can't happen. So all of our get all of our staff um, is trained to let them know that once again they cannot leave the premises with um, with alcohol. Okay. And with that being said, do you have receptionists or other personnel that are staged at these ingress egress areas so people are not walking off the premise with alcohol? Yep. Uh, the, the front desk reception is uh, manned 24 hours a day. And then, of course, all of our um, uh, entry and exits are manned during every hour of operation, so long as a guest is present. OK. And does the hotel also use equipment like security cameras to monitor just general patron traffic through hallways as well as the amenity areas? We do, yes. 
Great. And uh, lastly, will you also have no alcohol beyond this point signs at uh, areas of ingress, egress out to the main premises? So yeah, that's well, that. uh, very ahead. distinct and uh, signage, yes. Okay, great. Let's move on. Let's just talk a little bit about the game area and main bar. What type of amenities are going to be in this area? I know Gemma had already hit on it. If you could just expand a little bit, please. Sure, this is gonna be kind of a gathering space. We have um, some TVs to watch sporting events. We've got shuffleboard, ping pong, some um, billiards and some arcade games. Um, and this is where you know we may be conducting a trivia night or, or something like that. Okay, great. And so for your staffing capacity in this area, what, what's your general level of staff when we're talking about that estimated peak capacity that you had previously described? Yeah, uh, two bartenders, two servers, a busser, a host, and that 0.5 or manager who's splitting the interior and exterior room. Gotcha. And so that manager that's splitting the exterior and interior room, does he have clear, or, sorry, he or she, do they have clear visibility into both rooms? Are they able to uh, walk back and forth fairly easily to keep eye on uh, alcohol consumption? Yeah, um, if you look kind of in where that those rooms kind of meet, there are two, six, there's 12 feet of opening right there that are, there's no doors, no, there, there's no obstruction there. You just go to and from so you can see and travel easily. Perfect. And given that this is a different area, is there a different patron uh, ingress and egress towards the south there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, we're calling that our main uh, kind of um, entry into the restaurant for so we think of the lobby as the main entry for the hotel guests. We don't anticipate nor are we um, doing any wayfinding or signage that would help to suggest the main entry for us for the for the general public is coming in from that far south side. Great. And it looks like you have a door person, uh, at least a hostess always stationed there to ensure they're greeting every guest that's coming in. Yeah, by by again, by definition of what we're trying to do, there will always be a, a hostess or doorman there. And it is our um, it is our policy and intention to greet every guest that walks in the door in under 30 seconds. Great. And so obviously this door person would also help for individuals who are trying to walk out with alcohol or a situation. Yeah. OK, yes, they will monitor that as well. OK. And I'm assuming the staff in this area are getting the same training um, for alcohol service as well as orientation and training. Is that is that right? Yeah, to be clear, the badges that you see that are in green are bartenders, managers, and servers. Those are the those are the core staff that are going to receive that external CPR and tips training. Everybody is going through the internal training. Perfect. And are there different hours of operation for this main bar game room area? Or can you give us an idea of what weekly hours look like there? Yeah, uh, basically it's going to be a give or take kind of a thing. But it's uh, if you think of it as an 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. kind of an open um, uh, general hours of operation, that's going to get you pretty close. Uh, a little bit later on the weekends, a little bit earlier on the Sundays and Mondays. And again, um, volume and need is going to help us to determine that in the long run. Perfect. And so for the main bar and main dining area, when those places close down, how are you enforcing the closure hours? Meaning, you know, are guests still able to access those areas? Will they be locked off? How does that work? No, this entire side of the, the hotel um, will be closed down through locked doors um, when not in operation. Perfect. And with that being said, you also have servers in this area. So it's full service, but also patrons or guests can go up to the bar and order a drink as well. Is that correct? That is that is correct, and then this area is not is not envisioned as 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 much of traditional service. In other words, there will be some QR codes available to order food and only food. Um, all alcohol will go through our service staff, but um, this area is a little less formal than the main dining in service style. Great. And do any of those policies that we just described, such as transportation of alcohol, or carding people no matter where they come from. Does any of that change with this area? No, that's ident identical property-wide. Perfect. And so will your staff, your servers and bartenders, will they also have a line of sight, at least to the pool exit, um, you know, with guests and patrons trying to go back and forth in that area as well? Yeah, it's it's a, it's really, it's an incredible and relatively cavernous space, very wide open. We can see everywhere, yes. Yeah, and let's, let's go right into the pool area now. So you had said that there's no glassware allowed at the pool. Is that right? 
Correct. No glassware, ceramic plates, anything that can break. Nope. Okay. And you also have a door person when the pool is open stationed out at the, the main ingress and egress for patrons. Is that right? Yeah. We think of that more of that person as a host, but same idea. Yeah. Great. great. And so in general, if, if somebody is trying to move from the main bar to the pool deck with a glass, how, how's your staff going to handle that situation? I know you had already hit on it, but if you could just reiterate that point, please. Yeah, there, there's going to be a station at that particular point that will allow a guest to actually uh, grab a, a glass, but it we're, we're, we're going to try to do it for them. We would like to make it. So we'll always inform any guest that, 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 that they're welcome to continue to enjoy their beverage, but it has to be in a different glass. And then in an ideal world, we're pouring that into that plastic, very distinct plastic glass as well. Okay. And now for the pool area, can you just describe if there's any sort of different hours of operation? Obviously, we have a pool and it gets cold in Colorado. So could you kind of describe how you're planning on handling that situation? Yeah. So for right now, the guidelines are um, at 55 degrees and higher that the pool will be open. If it's daylight hours, the pool will be open, but they're <clears throat> um uh it, 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 so it's it's it'll close at sunset the pool itself and then again whether or not we open the pool decks is going to be so, to some degree temperature related great and uh again can you just give us an idea of what staffing capacity looks like out here when we're operating at a little bit of higher end traffic Yep. Uh, so you've got a manager that mans the the upper and lower pool deck, two bartenders, um, one server upstairs, two servers downstairs, um, and um, a host and a bus. Right. And that, your man like No, you're good. And your manager that kind of floats around this area, if they're standing on top of the pool deck, I'm assuming they have a clear line of sight down to the lower pool deck as well. Yeah, you get they are they are very visible, yes. Great. And so when the pool is closed, um, how are you going to enforce the closure here? How does that work in terms of locked doors, staging of employees? Let's yep. talk just a little bit about that. Um, so um, all, all entry and egress, you can't really tell on the diagram, but there's, you know, a, a, a six foot, seven foot fence on the outside perimeter with lockable doors. The, the, the doors from the hotel are also locked. So everything is going to be locked up high and tight. Let me see if I want to ask you anything else about the pool. Yeah. And again, I just want to hit this point home. The transportation of alcohol, as well as carting people wherever they go inside the, the establishment, that doesn't change out, out of the pool area, right? Those are the same policies. Again, property-wide, identical. Yep. Great. And now I want to talk just a little bit about events. Uh, do you foresee the property or the Boulder Broker Inn having an occasional event on the property? Yes. Okay, what types of events are, is the, I guess, is the applicant or is the licensee initially proposing or thinking about? Well, it, it really is a cool and exciting space. So within the, uh, the restaurant itself, we're anticipating, you know, like see you home games and those kinds of things, really being a, a part of the community in a large way there. And then there's actually um, a second floor kind of banquet facility up there that could host conferences or meetings or things like that. Okay, and before we dive into that, other than those occasional events, we're still sticking to the normal sort of country club amenity. That's what we're looking to provide. Yeah, absolutely. And even within those events, it would, I would still say it falls within that framework, but yes. Gotcha. So let's talk upstairs first. The reason upstairs is not pictured on this diagram is because upstairs is only going to be for closed events. Is that right? That is correct, and you can see you can see that in the packet there there is it's it, it is available for viewing, but it's not on this staffing and service uh, plan. Um, upstairs events will be staffed extremely similarly. All policies will be identical as far as um, alcohol service, guest ratios, those kinds of things. But yes, as you say, um, they're they're only for occasional and as booked events. Great, but. To reiterate that point that you just said, the upstairs bar, as well as the conference rooms, those aren't going to be open to the public during the normal weekday and weekday op or weekend operations. Is that right? Correct. Perfect. And so let's talk just a little bit about CU. Like, let's take your CU home game, for instance, having an, a, a watch party of that that sort of nature. Where do you envision doing that on the in terms of these service areas? 
So um, if if the if the restaurant's open, it's it's open, but um, all the screens and that kind of stuff are are concentrated and located in that game room, main bar, dining. So we anticipate ninety percent of things to be happening within that that central room that you see there. Okay, so mainly the main bar, the main dining area. Yeah, and game room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If the pool is open, say it's a nice uh, fall day. Uh, would the pool might be included in one of these CU watch parties? As far as it being open, yes. As far as it being where people are watching the game, probably not. Yeah, perfect. And with that being said, I know we have our normal staffing capacity that will be in all of these areas, even for a CU home game event. But are there additional security measures that you would take just for these events, say a CU home game? And if if there are, could you just explain those a little bit? Yes. No. If we if we if we get to meet meet or or get to those peak volumes and things, then yeah, we um we will be contracted with a third party security um firm as well as third party lifeguards that'll be brought in for uh, those high volume events. Okay. And where will and I'm guessing that's what these yellow dots are referring to on our yeah. our screen here. The so, yellow badges are kind of where um, we that that is that is correct. And actually, Officer Denig had a couple suggestions there as well that were really helpful. So great, and that was just with the staging of the security for yeah, just kind of where guys. where he thought the best line of sight would be for people. It was it was like I said, it was very helpful. Great. And do you have any sort of other security measures that these third party security are going to be using in terms of validating identification cards just for? Uh, we'll we'll take your CU home game event. Yeah, I mean, um, we we've always got the security cameras, the ID books. Um, we're all going to be uh, mic'd up with um, walkie talkies, so real time communication. That'll be managers um, and uh, any of the third party uh, um, service providers. Great. And do you envision just for these occasional events, IDing people right at the door and? maybe using a wristband system. I, I believe there was mention of that in this diagram. If you could just expand on that, please. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yes, um, so the the um, for any ticketed event or if, if anybody was coming in and there was any kind of entry fee, there'll be um, wristbands also for larger volume events as an additional layer of security. Yes, um, people 21 and up will be carded at the door um, and and identified through that. It's not going to, that doesn't mean they won't get carded again on the inside, but it is an additional layer of security that we'd like to ensure. Great. And just to make sure that's just for our, our occasional event that we're having. Yeah. A Tuesday afternoon. That's not the intention. Yep. Gotcha. All right, let's move on. I just want to talk just a little bit about music and then we'll wrap this up. So do you, or does the applicant or Boulder Broker Inn intend on offering amplified or acoustic music on occasion? Yeah, I mean, any hours of operation that were open, um, we always intend there to be background music, whether or not that's, you know, through a commercial service or where we, we've contemplated having DB, DJs provide that kind of thing as well. Um, but yeah, it, it will definitely, any time that, that we're open, um, it, with the exception of it, you know, a, a, if for any reason we're open after nine o'clock outside or something, it could be extremely low. We're going to have a decibel reader on site to make sure that we're not disturbing our, our hotel patrons. Um, but if we're open, there will be background music at either provided by DJs or by commercial um, music services. That's true. So I'll just call them like ambient DJs. So for these ambient DJs, uh, do you expect to have them just located in that main bar area? Is that where that DJ booth is? Is, yeah, is that the um, initial initial expectation? Yes, exactly. That there is there's a nicely wired system that goes into that that actually predates our ownership as well. So we took advantage of that. Yep. Perfect. All right. And now I just want to move into your background, Mr. Tapel. Um, how many I guess liquor license. If you could give me a ballpark, would you say you've consulted on in the past? I, in general, across the nation, uh, definitely dozens in that third, probably thirty-ish range. And then within the town of Boulder, there's been quite a few as well. Let's call that around a dozen as well. Okay. And yeah, uh, in various capacities, I used to run them, and then now, now I consult on them and those kinds of things. So. Okay. And for any of the licenses you've consulted on, have any of them had any sort of liquor license violations that you're aware of? Knock on wood, never under our tenure. Nope. Great. 
And now, lastly, like I'll talk a little bit about EBG's relationship since that was raised at the last hearing, but you had a walkthrough uh, with the Boulder Police Department as well as Ms. Teague. Could you just talk about what that walkthrough entailed and what you learned from it? Yeah, it was it was it was really really helpful, and and uh, I think it, I think it really illuminated things both directions. Um, they they got a much clearer understanding of what was going on down there, and um, and you know how how it was really kind of a traditional amenity to the hotel, and we got some really good insights about the the challenges that they've been facing, particularly in this town at this time. That was great. Like I mentioned, Officer Denig helped us out with kind of the line of sight for the third party security. So overall, I I thought it was it was I thought it was a great meeting. Great. And now let's just talk a little bit about EBG's role. So what did Boulder Broker and hire EBG to perform? Um, essentially, long-term hospitality consulting services, we come in and we help to um, educate ownership. Um, we direct report to them. We help that we help to source and hire everybody. We help to define menu and costs. We do financial projections. We help to um, write all the training manuals um, and all of the, uh, we help with all the design aspects. Then uh, once the doors open, we do a lot of analysis. We help to, we do weekly manager meetings. We just kind of uh, serve as somebody who's done this a whole bunch and 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 helps to make sure that things stay on track. Great. So though you're lending your expertise um, and knowledge, Boulder Broker Inn is hiring the employees directly. You're just giving them assistance and training. That's correct. And then at the end of the day, you wouldn't have ultimate decision-making authority over Boulder Broker in it's for them to decide though you are lending them your expertise and knowledge. Yeah, my my direct I direct report to Eric and Gemma and all ownership. Yes, that's correct. Great. And let's talk just a little bit about that. Eric Jacobson is listed as the general manager for this location. You're you direct report to him and what what is his role? I'm just curious. Yeah, he's he's general manager of the hotel property wide. And so we are a department of his. Okay, so you direct report to him and work with him in terms of the food and beverage department. Correct. Great. So you had permission to speak here today. Is that fair to say? Yes. <laughs> Great. And the last question that I didn't hit in my initial direct, uh, just for the hotel and uh, hotel and restaurant requirement, will full meals be available at all times in all of these areas uh, at the same time you're serving alcohol? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. I don't have any further questions for Mr. Tapel or Ms. Williams. I'll turn you guys over to the board for any questions um, and be here for any sort of clarifications. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? I just had one question going back. It was a very thorough presentation. Thank you very much. Um, we're talking about um, if somebody, are you allowing uh, open tabs? Like, so if somebody is at the pool and they open a tab and they swipe their card, like I've seen some other restaurants, they, you yeah. know, you can just go up to any server and you're like, oh, that's my name, put it on my tab. Yep. Uh, so they, they'll, they'll be able to do that, but they'll still need to be ID. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. I was just wondering if you had thought about that. that was yep. Yep. An open tab does not equate with an ID verification. So again, we we want to be as as wonderfully courteous to our guests as possible, but it, it's just it, it there that's a black and white one. So. All right. Are there any other questions? Not seeing any. Uh, Mr. Gimmel, did you have anything else to present? No, nothing from our presentation. I just appreciate the opportunity to dive a little bit more into the details. Great. At this time, we will close for deliberation. Is there any discussion with the group? I personally feel they hit all of our concerns and questions. I agree. And I think it's a really cool concept that South Boulder could really use. Yeah, I think I want to just um, thank the licensee for coming through with such um, the presentation was very um extensive and it, it needed to be because it's a big project you're taking on and um, I'm really happy and I'd really like to hear um, from Mr. Topol talking about we're going to card people at every level um, and, and that's what to, to me with a facility that large 
you just got to be so diligent. So um, I, I'm appreciative for that presentation. And I am, I'm willing to make a motion to approve the license. Great. That's Member Califano will second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. License approved. Thank you, Thank guys. you all so very much. We Congratulations. Good luck. Time. Appreciate Thank it. You. Hope to see you Bye. all in there sometime. Exactly. <laughs> see you guys later. Thanks, guys. Not yet, actually. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, we have agenda item 11, public hearing and consideration of an application filed on July 17, 2023 from Sherpa Holdings 2015 LLC, DBA Fuji Restaurant and Bar, 2018 Broadway, Boulder, Colorado, 80302, Pemba D. Sherpa, 100% owner and registered manager, with a premise business mailing address for a new hotel restaurant with liquor license. If you're here to speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand. See a couple of people coming in. Okay. I see someone named Leo Lee is here. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Zongbing Lee. I'm representing the applicant, Sherpa Holdings 2015 ALC. Thank you so much. And who else will be giving testimony today? Uh, it should be the owner and also the manager, Mr. Um, Mr. Pimba Sherpa. Okay. And let's see, I see. I'll ask this person to unmute here. And then if you can turn your camera on for me as well. Hi, yep, I'm here. Oh, okay. Hi. Okay. Okay, I will ask whoever is um, giving testimony to just state their name and spell their name for the record. Yes, um, again, this is Zong Bing Li representing the uh, applicant Sherpa Holdings, DBA um, Fuji Restaurant and Bar. Hi, and also I have uh, my witness, Mr. Sherpa, Mr. Pimba Sherpa. Hi, yeah, Pimba Sherpa here, um, owner of the Fuji Restaurant and Bar. Thank you. And if you'll just spell your name for the record. Yep, it's P E M B A S H E R P A. Thank you. And um if you will raise your right hand for me. Do you swear or affirm that the statements you're about to give are correct and true? Yes. And do you swear that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Lee, are you um, an attorney representing? Yes, I'm so Thank sorry. You. I'm not wearing not wearing a, a, a student tie. I'm currently actually uh, with my children for their fall break in Hawaii, so I did not bring my student tie with me. I'm so sorry. No, you're totally fine. I just wanted to make sure that we have the situation going on. Okay, great. I will hand it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Can we get your um, identification number into the record? Yes, um, it's four three six two nine. Great. And since you're representing as counsel, um, would you be willing to waive the readings of the proceedings into the record? Yes. Great. Is there any ex parte communication or conflict of interest from any of the board members for this agenda item? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. Great. And is there anyone in the audience here that wishes to speak to this agenda item? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any. All right, great. Mr. Lee, you may proceed. Yes. Um, good afternoon, BLE members. And uh, my name is Zongbin Lee, representing the applicant and uh, um, Sherpa Holdings 2015 LLC, DBA Fuji Restaurant Bar is located at 2018 Broadway, um, Boulder, Colorado, 8002, and is applying for a hotel and rest, um, restaurant liquor license. Um, the business is in operation, and uh, um, I have my uh, the owner of the business, Mr. Uh, Pimpa Sherpa, um, here today. He's going to uh, testify. He personally circulated the petitions, and according to 
the summary and also the uh, uh, record that I have is 100% from both the business and also from the residential uh, surveys. And uh, uh, I'm going to ask him to briefly introduce to us about his um, circulation of the petitions. And I'm going to also ask him about the uh, personal experiences and uh, his good moral character and related background information as well. Mr. Califano, should I proceed to um, call him or? Hello? Um, are we still there? I'm sorry. Yeah, we're here, but I don't think your uh, client is. Hi, yep, I'm here. Okay. Were you going to have him present? Yes, I'm going to ask him a few questions regarding the circulation first. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Sherpa. Can you please briefly introduce to us about um, your relation or affiliation to the business? Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and Lee. Um, thank you again. Um, so my name is Pemba Sherpa, for the record again. So I'm the 100% business owner for Fuji Restaurant and Bar, and also the manager who is taking care of the business. Okay, what kind of a restaurant is this? Um, it's like an Asian fusion restaurant with Japanese, Nepalese, and Indian uh, food. When did the uh, when did this restaurant open? Uh, this restaurant was originally started back in two thousand fifteen. And why do you think you need to apply for a liquor license? Uh, for the growth of the business, um, because I have a lot of customers, um. They come in, especially in the dinner time. Actual, hey, do you guys have any, you know, uh, beers or liquors? Um, also, in the past, we had a liquor license, but <clears throat> due to um, since we did not renew on time, it was past ninety days, so we had to go through the process again. And it's been a year, more than a year. I'm trying to um, get this liquor license and get on again. Who conducted the survey or the survey of petitions for this application? Yes, I personally did um, this survey uh, myself and also my brother, Fulva Sherpa, who works at the restaurant as a supervisor, helped me um, do one of the resident petition uh, for one day. Can you briefly introduce to the board members about the petition, how you conducted it and when you conducted it? Um, yes, um, so I do not have the original um, original. Um, original signature of the petition because I handed to the um, to the liquor license department. Um, but yep, yeah, so there was a map that was given to me. So I started um, with those map frames um, with the business and also the residents. When did you conduct the survey? Um, Uh, like I said, I do not have the physical paper because I handed out to the um, city department. Okay. I, yeah, sorry. I have in front of me the uh, petition survey. Um, is it true that you conducted the uh, business survey, I mean the survey on September 26th and 27th? Yes, that's right. Correct. That's for, is that for um, circulating the petitions? among the businesses? Correct. Did you also circulate the petitions among the residents? Yes, I did. When did you conduct the uh, survey um, among the residentials, the residential building? Uh, for the residents, I believe I did it on the second day. First day, my target was to go around all the business around downtown Boulder on the Paul Street within that map time, uh, map friend they gave me. So I wanted to do all the businesses on that day. And on the following second day, um, I wanted to um, go through the neighbor's residence to get some signatures. Do you still remember how many businesses did you visit? Yes, it was um, about 103. Yeah. I'm sorry, you can tell us a rough number if you do not re remember the exact number. Um, yeah, I, I went around like it was probably 
103 businesses that I went around. Some of them were closed. Um, some of them did not have their manager on site, and some of them were a uh, franchise company, which they could not make a decision. Um, I mean, uh, they said like it would be a process. They would have to go through the department uh, board, and they were not able to sign, and they did not participate. But other than that, yes. For all the businesses that are qualified to answer the survey or the, the petition, how many oppose um, the application and how many favor the application? Uh, for business, uh, it was all, um, no one opposed, so they all, they all agreed. Are you saying it's 100% in favor of the application? Correct. How about for the residents? How many did you remember that you knocked the door? Uh, how many answered? Yeah, for the residents, it was about close to 90. And I mean, I believe I went around like 93, 95. But uh, most of the people, they were not home. Um, so I had to go at different time frames. Um, I also went on like morning time during Saturday. I had to go like during um, um, the, um, like weekdays after probably after five or six. But no one opposed. So is that also a 100% favor? Correct. Okay. So based on the result of the petition, do you believe there's a need and desire in the community for a liquor license? Yes, I do. Okay, back to your personal background. How many years have you been operating a restaurant? Um, operating a restaurant, um, it been, it's been two years, but I've been working in the restaurant in industry for more than seven, seven years. During these years, have you had any violations of the liquor license or related laws and regulations in the state of Colorado? No. How many employees do you have uh, that is going to serve alcohol to customers? Uh, it's going to be, so it's a small um, restaurant. So it's been, um, it'll be more than, um, it's three employees. So it'll be two or three employees that be serving alcohol. And those are all tips certified. Have you attached the uh, certification of tips uh, training? I'm sorry, say it again. Have you provided the certificates of tips training of these employees? I believe I did a long time ago. This liquor license has been um, over a year, but I believe I did. If not, I can send it again. As a side note, uh, board members, we have already provided the uh, certificates of the employees um, proving that they have already completed their trip, uh, tips training. Um, do you have any criminal backgrounds or criminal records that will um, prevent you from obtaining a liquor license? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat again? Have you had any criminal records that will prevent you from getting a liquor license? No. I have no further questions. Thank you. Great. Um, are there any questions from the board? I and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not seeing the tip certifications in your in your packet. Is it there? In my physical packet, um, I have it. I should have already provided to the CD. If not, I can provide after I uh, come back um Colorado. There are um some certifications starting on page two hundred and sixty-five. Doesn't look like they're from tips, but they are um sorry, they're sideways, but they are training certificates. Uh, that's yes. why. This could be a problem, my bad, sorry. All right, um, any other questions from the board? All right, not seeing any. Uh, Mr. Lee, did you have anything else you wanted to present? Um, nothing, just uh, we hope that um, the board will agree with us that there is a need and desire in the community for a liquor license. And also the uh, applicant qualifies uh, for such a liquor license. All right, at this time we will close for deliberation.
Is there any discussion or a motion? I mean, I, I actually admire the fact that a lot of this was was done by the applicant themselves and not using a, you know, that's that just shows me getting out in the community um, and doing the petitioning on their own was really was really a go getter attitude to that location is a location that is going to be a high volume place. Um, so I just I mean, I for my deliberation, I, I'm inclined to make a motion to approve this license um, unless there's anything else from the board. Is there anything else or a second? I'll second that motion. And I agree. I, I really appreciate all the effort that was put into this. Thank you. All right. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. License approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good, good luck. Day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, we have agenda item 12, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on August 7th, 2023 from Boulder Shack LLC, DBA Main Shack, 2010 16th Street, Unit 110, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Howard Andrew Ryan, President, Eric Purit, Member, John Capiro, Vice President, and Christiana Ryan, Proposed Registered Manager with a business mailing address of 1535 Central Street. Denver, Colorado, 80211 for a new hotel restaurant side liquor license. And if you're here to speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand. And I'll start promoting the panelist here. Okay, so someone is coming, I'll ask you to unmute and turn your camera on. It looks like someone named Howard has entered. If you can unmute and turn your camera on. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Okay, great. Um, I will go ahead and have whoever is testifying today, if you will just say your name and spell your name for the record. Okay. It's uh, Howard Andrew Ryan, H-O-W-A-R-D-A-N-D-R-E-W-R-Y-A-N. Thank you. I go by uh, I go by the name Drew though. Perfect. And are you the only one that will be testifying today? Uh, I have my wife Tina here, who is a manager. Okay. Um, so I will be. We are representing ourselves. We don't have an attorney. Okay, great. Um, and Tina, will you be giving testimony at all? Yes. Okay, great. I'll have you say your name and spell your name for the record. Spell your name. Do you have me as Christina? Yeah, Christina Ryan, C H R I S T I N A R Y A N, Christina Ryan. And I'll have you both raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true? Yes. yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Awesome. I'll hand over to the Great. And since you're not represented by counsel, I'll go ahead and read the proceedings into the record. This is a public hearing before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of applicant Boulder Shacks LLC doing business as Main Shack for a hotel restaurant type liquor license shall be granted or denied. This hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of the state of Colorado and the rules of the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. The purpose of this hearing is to receive information, data, and testimony by interested parties in order to enable this authority to make the findings to reach the conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the license applied for shall issue. Interested parties are the applicant, residents of the neighborhood under consideration, and the owners and managers of a business located in the neighborhood under consideration. For purposes of determining who is an interested party at this hearing, the neighborhood under consideration is the neighborhood previously defined by the authority. The authority shall make a final determination of the affected neighborhood prior to determining whether the license shall be issued. 
Any interested party may speak to the question of the neighborhood designation, as well as other information relevant to the granting or denial of the application. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who wish to, or those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Is there any conflict of interest or ex parte communication from the board member? Uh, member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Roberts, no. And is there anyone here in the audience that wishes to speak to this agenda item? Please raise your hand. I'm seeing no hands. Great. All right, Mr. Ryan, you may proceed. Hi. Um, tell you a little bit about B Boulder Shack uh, LLC. Uh, Boulder Main Shack will be loaded uh, will be located at 2010 16th Street which also has the address of 1601 Pearl Street, Suite 110. It was previously Leaf Restaurant, but that has been vacant since they closed in 2018. We leased the premise. The landlord is aware of and in support of our H&R application. We'll be open daily at 11 a.m. and close at 9 p.m. Sunday to Thursday and at 10 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. Our expected opening date is November 1st. We wanted to open sooner, um, but we had some delays with the zoning and um, ADR review with the development services. So, um, but Main Shack is, we have another restaurant in Denver um, and we're a fast casual restaurant. Uh, we start, we opened in 2018 and building off of the name recognition and a high quality New England seafood of Main Shack of Denver, our Boulder location will also be very approachable neighborhood restaurant where patrons can come and enjoy all sustainable and authentic menu offerings. The menu will feature six different varieties of lobster rolls, fried whole belly clams, fresh scallops, haddock, steamers, house-made New England clam chowder, entry side salad, I mean, I'm sorry, entree side salads, uh, lobster mac and cheese, as well as su several other New England specialties. Many sh showcasing a variety of ingredients sourced from the Gulf of Maine. Our catch is sustainable and traceable. We will have a full bar. Our liquor drinks will be beer, cocktails, and wine. Food is our main focus, though. We expect our food to liquor ratio to be approximately 85% food, 50% liquor, like it is at our Denver location. Target market is the entire Boulder community. Families, singles, business, workers, college students, and everyone who enjoys delicious food. We believe in having a positive impact in the community. Our Denver location survived COVID and it continues to be successful while many longer established restaurants in the area and the Upper Highlands have closed. We look forward to forming relationships with our neighbors and are very excited to be uh, and proud to be joining the Boulder business community. Um, about our ownership, I own 41%. My partners are Eric Parrott, who owns 40%, and John Caprio, who owns 19 My wife, Tina, will be a manager um for the liquor license um my and tina's liquor experience has been opening and operating the original main shack in denver for the last four years but we have not had any liquor violations or problems tina was also previously a bartender at glenn arvin country club for two years eric has over 20 years of experience in the hospitality industry he's currently the president of live nation entertainment rockies division since 2008 John has over 20 years of experience in the hospitality industry, including running the Fox Theater in Boulder for five years and as GM for AEG, Ogden Theater, Blue Bear Theater, and Fiddler's Green in Denver for over 10 years, and as an operator at Main Shack since it opened. Development tip certified. Um, we're all experienced in evaluating if someone is becoming intoxicated, cutting people off, calling a ride share, confiscating fake IDs, we're familiar with being a responsible alcohol vendor and being careful to not over serve and not to serve anyone underage. Are there any questions from the board at this time? The board have any questions? No, um, please continue. Okay. Um, our premises, let me walk you through the diagram of the premises. Can you pull that up or do you want me to, I, I just have a printout, I'm not as, Alright, I can 
Here we go. Okay, and if you're looking at the packet, it's going to be on page 353. Okay. Does that look correct? That does look correct. Okay, so to your top left of that that diagram is our front door, and that is on 16th Street. And when you walk straight ahead, the ordering counter, because we're a fast casual restaurant, so you'll be ordering from the from the order counter. And then we have a small bar to the right with uh, six. It says there's seven stools there, but we actually, uh, um, it's probably going to be all six. Um, seven if you want to squeeze somebody else in there. Um, but um, you so you order from the point of service counter. The guests will receive a number and their food and drinks are then delivered to the table. Uh, the restaurant area is just over 2,000 square feet with 1,026 square feet of customer area that will seat 50 and a 321 square foot patio that seats 26. The patio is fully visible uh, through the windows by our staff from the, from the service counter. The basement is for employee use and storage only. So we'll always have the windows open and the counters and the bars always facing outside to that patio. So um, our liquor storage areas are highlighted in yellow. All the liquor storage will be locked. Does the board have any questions at this time? I do not believe so. Please continue. Okay. Um, alcohol controls. All new employees, including managers, go through a multi- day training program. Each service employee and manager will receive a main jack alcohol management handbook. They will also be required to have tips or serve safe certification within 90 days of employment. Our alcohol service policy is to ID anyone who appears to be under the age of 50. We will have a signed zero tolerance alcohol service policy if an employee is found to have served someone who is underage or visibility intoxicated. They will be terminated IDs will be checked at the point of sale counter using an ID checking guide. Our other alcohol policies include uh, ID every customer who orders a drink and appears to be 50 years of age or younger. IDs for each individual drink being ordered. We will not accept vertical Colorado IDs. Customers will be allowed to have a maximum of four drinks. Um, needs and desires. To prove that issuing an h &R liquor license to Boulder Shack meets the needs and desires of the neighborhood. We will testify that we posted the notice, we circulated petitions, and Tina and I will give testimony. I believe we have everything in our packet. Are there any questions regarding their petition and needs and desires from the packet that we have? Not seeing any. Uh, please continue. Okay. Um, I guess I can just skip over all that then. I because I I can talk about the amount of people that I've contacted. Um, we've made contact with 124 people. Four were not home. Two refused to sign. One for alcohol uses objection. The other did not give a reason. 103 were in favor. None were opposed. Of those in favor, 70 were residents and 33 were businesses. In reference to the needs and desires, signatures 100% were in favor of issuance. Great. Please continue. Okay. Um, the feedback we received was extremely positive. People are excited for us to open. Uh, based on the results of the pet petitioning, the residents and businesses in the area are in favor and that there is a need and a desire for our license within the designated area. Any questions? Um, no. Okay. Well, I firmly believe that there is a need and a desire for Boulder Shack to obtain a hotel and restaurant liquor license our liquor license would not have an adverse impact on the health welfare safety of the designated area and current liquor licenses located within the neighborhood do not already meet these needs we will have a positive impact on the community our location has been vacant for five years there are no restaurants like ours in boulder area or in colorado for that matter we appeal to have many different types of customers and we will be a neighborhood staple as well as destination location any questions? No questions. Um, I'm going to hand off to Tina now. Hello. Um, 
I also believe that there is a need and desire for Boulder Shack to have a hotel and restaurant liquor license and that it would not have an adverse impact on the health, welfare, or safety of the designated area. Um, just excited to have a this unique um, style of restaurant in the area with all the different variety of offerings to the, to join this the, the bustling neighborhood there. And I'm excited for the option for the community. Great, thank you. Uh, is there any questions from the board? I am not seeing any. I did just wanna say I was impressed by your um, alcohol policy. I think it's very thorough. Um, I think that the content is very relative and necessary. So I do think that that is a very good policy to have. Um, I'm not sure if you plan on <laughs> um, getting involved with the Responsible um, Association of Retailers or RAR. Um, I think it would be very beneficial to become a member of that. They have, I believe, bi-monthly meetings um, that are very informative about current issues uh, regarding alcohol service in the city. So um, I think, or I would highly recommend looking into that. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have anything else you wanted to present? I think that's it. I'm, um, if, unless you have any um, questions, I, I have printed out in our alcohol management program. So uh, I don't know if everyone got a chance to see that. I know you did. <laughs> yeah, it's all in our packet materials we receive. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was very thorough and great. But yeah, if you don't have anything else to present, we can close for deliberation. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion or a motion? I, I was very impressed with this application and I, I think it's very straightforward and um, very safety driven. So um, I would personally make a motion to approve. I would second that motion and I've actually um, been to that Denver location and it is a cool concept. I think oh, that would be thank you. there. So I'd second that motion to approve. Yeah, I, that's, I'll just kind of echo the sentiments here. Um, what a packet, well done. Um, and I, I will put on the record that I was married in Maine. Um, and I have I have met Drew. We did not t discuss any liquor licensing things. I'm no longer with the Mountain Sun Group, but um, I I am so full fully happy that East East Pearl is going to get some love. So um, thank you. There's already a, there's already a motion in a second. So you go ahead. All in favor, say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Uh, new license granted. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have um, agenda item 13, matters from assistant city attorney. I don't have anything for the board today unless you all have questions for me. Um, I just wanted to actually bring something up that I didn't respond to an email because I was going through the process of changing up my emails. But um, so my primary residence is going to continue to be in Boulder through the end of my term, um, just so everyone's aware. So I'll send that in, in written form and email. So my primary residence will be here um, as long as that by our rules, believe I believe that allows me to continue and finish out my term via Zoom from Mexico, where I will be. As long as Boulder continues to be your primary residence, yes. I mean, I will feel bad about my background, but. <laughs> well, I'll just be a little jealous. It's fine. That's, that's all. That's all. That's, 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 that's feel bad about. But otherwise, that was the only thing I wanted to bring up to the city attorney's office. So. Okay. Thank you. Don't you. Have to brag. <laughs> okay. Um. Awesome. So next we have agenda item 14, matters from licensing clerk. We have three boundary settings for you guys today. The first one is um, Safeway Stores 46, Inc. DBA Safeway Store 2911 for a permanent modification of a fermented malt beverage and wine retailer off premise type liquor license application at 2798 Arapaho Avenue, Boulder, Colorado 80302. Um, I'll share my screen. The suggested boundaries um, are from the original application, um, and that is Pearl Street on the north, Colorado on the south, Foothills Parkway on the east, and um, 17th Street on the west. There's my for you. 
I would make a motion to approve those boundaries. Member Absalom, second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you. Um, next, we have Safeway Store 46 Inc. DBA Safeway Store 2919 for a permanent modification of a fermented malt beverage and wine retailer off premise type liquor license application at 4800 Baseline Road, Boulder, Colorado 80303. The suggested boundaries are also from the original application, and that is Arapahoe on the north, South Boulder Road on the south, city limits on the east, and 30th Street extended on the west. Member Califano would make a motion to approve those boundaries. Member Roberts will second that. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you. And last we have the Med Restaurant Group LLC DBA The Mediterranean for a new hotel restaurant type liquor license application at 1001 Wal Walnut Street. Suite 101B, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Um, the suggestion boundaries I pulled from Corita, which is at 1023 Walnut Street, uh, Unit 400. Um, that's, so that's just right across the street. And the suggested boundaries I have are Maxwell Extended on the north, Marine Street on the south, 20th Street on the east, and 4th Street on the west. Member Califano would move to approve those boundaries. Member Absalom would second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Awesome, thank you. Um, there was no expected administrative processing of liquor license transfer applications this month for breweries, wineries, and distilleries. Um, you have your special event permits and your liquor license renewals in the packet. And then um, I believe that Kristen wanted to ask a couple of questions of the board, so I'll hand it over. Thanks, Caitlin. I just had a couple of quick questions for the board. Um, number one, just wanted to check in regarding our upcoming meetings in November and December, since we are getting close to the holiday season. Just wanna make sure that we are planning on having a forum for those meetings. Um, as a reminder, the November meeting is scheduled for November 15th, and the December meeting is scheduled on December 20th. Um, is anyone anticipating being absent for either of those meetings? I am not. I plan on being present for both. I also plan on being present for both. Great. Thank you. And then second, I just wanted to mention that um, 2024 board recruitment will be begin beginning soon. Um, we're anticipating that applications will open on December 18th. And our office and the city clerk's office will be conducting outreach for potential new members, but also just wanted to ask if you all know anyone that might be interested, if you could please help us spread the word, because um, we'd really like to fill that fifth seat uh, next year. Would you be able to send the the link to um the process to us as a group so I can forward that along to people who are interested? Sometimes it's harder for me to navigate like how you get into the application process. Um, and I certainly have people who are interested, especially when I was telling people that my seat is going to be available. Um, I think there's some people in the industry that certainly should be represented here. So. Absolutely, Caitlin, did you want to elaborate on that? Nope, I was just going to let them know that. Just, just just forward it along to me. We'll Is make sure it's included in one of the packets. If it's released on December 18th, then we could even include it as an exhibit for the December 20th meeting. Is there any like criteria that needs to be met with the, because we have an open seat, right? And then is there any specific criteria? Not necessarily. Um, all board members do need to be city of Boulder residents. Um, so that will not change as far as a specific demographic. I'm not aware of any particular requirement. Uh, I mean, like, it, does the person need to be in the industry or anything? Like, do we, are we looking for that kind of representation? Okay. Yeah. That's what I mean. No, not necessarily. What it comes down to is when, if we do have multiple applicants, um, the city clerk's office will go through an interview um, process. And so sometimes if someone does have industry experience, that might help them in the interview process. But it's 
certainly not a requirement for applicants. Thank That's you. it for me. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. Um, and I will send an email to Member Carr um, asking about his schedule for the holidays as well. Um, perfect, the last are agenda item is matters from chair and members of the authority. Is there anything from the board? Uh, I don't have anything, but boy, did I have to read a lot of those proceedings. I will say just um, a shout out to put on the record to our chair for being so diligent around certain things in this hearing. Um, really smart, really um, executing things that we need to hear without hearing so much extra things. So um, cheers to Chair Califano. Thank you for that. And with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Well, thank you for that, Mike. Um, yeah, I will second that motion. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Roberts, aye. And we are adjourned awesome. at 538. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. See you next month. Yeah.